Today's lecture is on the Latin American poet Octavio Paz and his poem The Broken Water Jug. Octavio Paz is basically a Mexican poet, essayist, international diplomat. He was born in 1914, the year in which the First World War broke out and he died in 1998. So he has lived through the 20th century and he has experienced and responded to the trends and tendencies of the 20th century. Now about his family, uh, his father Octavio Pass was a lawyer. Apart from being a lawyer, his father was also an active political journalist. He had participated in the agrarian uprisings. Uh, which took place after the Mexican Revolution uh, that was between 1910 and 1920. And because of his father's involvement in many political activities, he was largely away from home. And so, uh, little Octavio Paz was always left to the care of his mother, his aunt, and most importantly, his uh, paternal grandfather that is his father's father uh, his grandfather's name was Irineo Paz he was a great novelist and also a political activist and his grandfather was a strong was a strong a staunch supporter of the war hero the Mexican war hero Porfirio Diaz apart from that uh, Irineo Paz was a voracious reader and he had an extensive library. So right from a, a very young age, uh, his grandson, Octavio Paz, of a poet, uh, he was exposed to that extensive library uh, where his grandfather stocked uh, a large collection of books uh, pertaining to literature, politics, religion, society, culture, and many things. So this was his initial introduction to literature. Apart from that, he was uh, heavily influenced by other writers like Gerardo Diago, Juan Ramon Jimenez, and Antonio Machado. All these are Spanish writers, more specifically Spanish poets. And uh, moving on to the literary output of Octavio Paz, he started writing at a very young age and his first collection of poetry was called uh, Luna Silvestre. Uh, which was in Spanish and it was translated into English, uh, Wild Moon, uh, which pub published in 1933. In 1937, he visited Spain and at that time the Spanish uh, Civil War was going on there. There, uh, he showed his solidarity with the Republicans and his reflections uh, of those events uh, are represented in another work the book is titled beneath your clear shadow and other poems and this book was published in spain in 1937 and uh, this book revealed him as a great promise other than this we see his influence in several other ideologies like marxism surrealism existentialism buddhism and even hinduism he has uh, published several uh, celebrated poetic works like Freedom Under Parole uh, that was published in 1949. Then another collection, uh, They Shall Not Pass. Then The Sunstone, published in 1957. And then he uh, also published a prose volume. Uh, which consists of essays and literary criticism and that was uh, called the labyrinth of solitude again published in 1950 and in that book he analyzes the history and culture of mexico and as a poet he believed that poetry is the secret religion of the modern age Altogether, in his works, we see an intersection of philosophy, religion, politics, 
culture, art, etc. And considering his exemplary literary output, uh, he was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature uh, in the year 1990. The Broken Water Jar by Octavio Paz The rain, eyes of shadow water, eyes of well water, eyes of dream water, blue suns, green whirlwinds, bird beaks of light, Pecking open pomegranate stars. But tell me, burnt earth, is there no water? Only blood, only dust, only naked footsteps on the thorns. The rain awakens. We must sleep with open eyes. We must dream with our hands. We must dream the dreams of a river seeking its course. Of the sun dreaming its worlds, we must dream aloud. We must sing till the song puts forth roots, trunk, branches, birds, stars. We must find the lost word and remember what the blood, the tides, the earth and the body say and return to the point of departure. He begins by appreciating nature and a beautiful aspect of nature that is rain. When raindrops fall onto earth, it's like a water jug in the heavens, in the skies has been broken and water is sprinkled all over. Rain is a beautiful phenomenon of nature. It is this rain that makes things grow. Nature, nurture and water, all these things go hand in hand. And rain not just calms the parching earth, but it also symbolizes creation and life. Without rain, there would be no life. Here shadow water refers to that holy water, which is used by saints to cure diseases. Then well water, something that we use for daily purposes for drinking, bathing, washing. We use well water. Then dream water that has a philosophical connection. Water is associated with fertility, creativity, emotional well-being, purity, uh, renewal, then uh, new endeavors like uh, the, the uh, psychologist Freud has associated uh, water in our dreams to birth. So the point is that water, so in fact all life on earth depends on water. It's a vital natural resource. So be it from the point of view of religion or philosophy or psychology or daily life, water signifies life. It is as important as the air we breathe. It is a vital element and that's why the poet calls water or rain as the ice, as the nucleus of everything. In the next lines too, the poet is exposing nature's extravagance. Blue suns Green whirlwinds, bird beaks of light, pecking open pomegranate stars. So he's showing us all those elements and aspects of nature. The sun, the light, the whirlwind, the stars, all those images, all those variety of natural elements, natural resources organisms, species of plants, birds, then the colors, blue, green, pomegranate, red. So he's telling us about nature's plenty. There is variety in everything that you see. It's not a monotonous stone. Everything is unique. Every resource is unique. Every element is unique. 
and all these aspects are beautiful and powerful in itself so he has shown us a light side a beautiful side of nature and he turns to the other side the dark side and says but tell me burnt earth is there no water only blood only dust only naked footsteps on the thorns so on one side if there is prosperity beauty life and all those beautiful and positive aspects on the other side we also have the opposite of all this dark barren ugly violence sadness depression etc so both these aspects coexist if there is light there is also darkness if there is happiness there is also sadness if there is prosperity there is also stagnation if there is success there is also failure so all this coexist the rain awakens we must sleep with open eyes we must dream with our hands we must dream the dreams of a river seeking its course of the sun dreaming its worlds so here the rain it is cleansing it is cleansing not only the earth and our bodies but our spirit it brings a new openness to our lives the rain awakens can also mean the storms in our life we should learn to celebrate life storms learn to love yourself learn to find the cause of life for yourself and he says we must sleep with open eyes which means we should remain vigilant at all times we should be aware of what is going on around us the social political economic philosophical everything it's not like we should remain ignorant about what is going on around us that is nonsensical as a human being you have to make the best use of all your senses we must dream with our hands if you simply sit idle and dream for whatever you want and just dream the life that you want that is not going to happen don't sit idle and wait for miracles in order to get your dream life we have to work for it and that's why he says we must dream with our hands we must do our duties carry out our responsibilities make the best use of opportunities that come along and that's how we'll be able to achieve what we want in life that's how we'll be able to manifest the dreams that we want uh, to live with we must dream the dreams of a river seeking its course we should think like a river even if that water body is blocked somewhere it will find out its own course to the ocean it will chart out its own path to reach the destination so we must dream the dream of a river and then we must dream the dream of the sun the sun dreaming its worlds that is if you want to shine like a sun then you will be then you should be willing to burn like a sun nothing grows in the place of comfort if you really want a life as you imagine then you must be willing to work for it and likewise the sun is not only a bright star it shines it is bright but at the same time it is compassionate it is life giving it just provides its light and radiance to everything on earth it is that power generator without the sun none of us would even exist in the first place so it is the sun's dream to provide light to provide life to radiate positivity so just like that be like the sun or dream like the sun we must dream aloud most of us hesitate to share our deepest or most inspired desires the people that we meet daily the members in our family each and every one that we see around all of us have dreams but not everyone 
will express it not and everyone will try to fulfill it try to achieve it it will always lie buried in the deepest realms of our mind so the poet here says dream aloud let the world know you should have the courage to show up yourself don't hide yourself and your talents amidst the crowd we should believe in the power and beauty of our dreams so make it aloud express your dreams and as the great writer paolo coelho said when you really want something the whole universe will conspire to make it happen that's it we must sing till the song puts forth roots trunk branches birds stars we must find the lost word and remember what the blood the tides the earth and the body say and return to the point of departure we must sing till the song puts forth roots trunk branches birds star that means we must touch upon all the aspects of nature we should have a deep connection with everything around us be it the plants the animals the skies the stars everything make a deep connection communion with all these that will make your life better we exist because we have all these things around us we are all connected to each other through an invisible thread hold on to that never break your deep connection with nature we must find the lost word and remember what the blood the tides the earth and the body say and return to the point of departure so somewhere sometime that connection has been lost we have to regain it we have to find that lost connection we have to listen to nature because since the beginning of the world the sea the stars earth people everything has been there so in order to regain that lost connection we have to listen to nature because nature is a witness to all the events that has happened in history all the bloodshed all the violence all the passage of time all the generations of people the changes everything is witnessed by uh, nature and we have to retain to that point of departure that point refers to the point since when we lost our connection with nature so we have to go back to that point we have to set back everything proper and right we have to restart everything okay so this is the poem the broken water jug by octavio paz now this is the beauty of his poetry he makes us take interest in things we have never been interested in before he's talking about the common things around us which we take for granted we fail to associate any significance to all those things around us through his poetry he brings alive all our faculties it questions everything that we are and for reading and understanding pass it takes all our imagination he touches all our sensibilities so that is the beauty of his poetry and we have the good fortune of living together with an exceptional poet like pass so that's the poem thank you